it's a very exciting time to be a wrestling fan. If you're in the business of making money, it would behoove you to be a safe and inclusive space. Whether you agree with what someone is saying has nothing to do with his right to say it. What's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I check and fresh my time so you don't have to. Okay, before we get into the whole SmackDown review or even the Goldberg and Oscar stuff, give me one minute to cook for a second. So, if you guys don't know, or if you do know, because it is mainstream music overall, old, but still mainstream music regardless, Kurt Cobain, lead singer of Nirvana, skipping himself in Minecraft, his 30th anniversary is coming up in two more weeks. You know who else died that day? And I'm sick and tired of Nirvana consistently overshadowing them, in particular Kurt, Lane Staley died that day. His 22nd anniversary is going to come up. He even got overshadowed on his 20th anniversary. I had to put out a community post for it and everything like two years ago. Folks, the end all be all in grunge music, which I fucking hate that term, by the way, is not just Nirvana. Pearl Jam is a thing. The aforementioned Alice in Chains, talking about Lane Staley, is a thing. Soundgarden is a thing. Stone Temple Pilots is a thing. Underground bands. You still got people like, like from Seattle alone. You got Tad. You got Mud Honey. You got L7. You got the Melvis. Hell, talking about Pearl Jam. You got fucking Mother Love Bone for an example with Andrew Wood. All right. You, you got outside, bitch. You got Hole. Okay. You even got solo acts like Liz Fair or, or fucking uh, Juliana Hetfield for an example, right? The Smashing Pumpkins closely associated with it. Fucking Billy Corgan, way better fucking singer slash guitar player than he ever will be a fucking promoter in wrestling. Folks, the end all be all is not Nirvana. I love Nirvana. I can name more unknown songs for Nirvana than you can mainstream songs, right? I know Downer. I know Mexican Seafood. I know Errol Zeppelin. I know an Enerism. I know Stain. I know fucking Paper Cuts. I know more no I know more unknown songs and, and Big Long Now. I know a bunch of them. Okay, I know how to play them on my guitar and everything. Nirvana is not the end-all be-all for grunge music. They're not the end-all be-all for fucking anything. God damn it. Lane Staley also, his anniversary is coming up in two weeks. For those who care, just throwing it out there. Let's get into fucking Goldberg and Oscar. Come on. So I'll set up the premise for you real quick. Uh, this is coming from the Tim Green Nothing Left Unsaid podcast. I'll read the background to set this all up, and then I'll read the transcript for you guys. Bill Goldberg has some comments regarding his WWE career in a new podcast interview, including that WWE had some Japanese girl beat his undefeated streak. Appearing as a guest on Tim Green, Nothing Left Unsaid, Goldberg spoke about Asuka setting in a new record for most consecutive matches undefeated as he arrived in WWE for a second run with the company in 2016. In a transcript, he says, and I quote from Goldberg, Well, a girl beat my winning streak, beat my undefeated streak. I can't even remember. Asuka, which he mispronounced her name, which I'm going to assume he said Asuka, something like that. I'm going to just assume. That's how most people mispronounce Asuka's name. What's her name? Some Japanese girl. And they touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak. And it just so happened that <laughs> that culminated when I got there, right? Uh, I, I guess the rest of the transcript doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, let's let's talk about that. All right, so there's more stuff to talk about in that article. I'll leave the link down in the description box below. It goes into detail about some situation with Goldberg and his spear being overused and his relationship with Triple H. But I want to focus on this one in particular. Goldberg, I love you. Got into you in the mid and late 90s when I first got into professional wrestling, mid to late 90s. You were one of the first guys I heard talked about because Goldberg was the fucking man. If you were only there in 1998 during the time at this at his peak, you don't understand the hype behind Goldberg. Him and Austin, even before The Rock, it was him and Austin as far as being the two badasses in professional wrestling. And honestly, celebrity in general at the time. Love Goldberg. Always going to love Goldberg. With that being said, he's a mark. A humongous mark. A ginormous mark. Goldberg, Goldberg, Goldberg. 
Now, I can see where he's coming from rhetoric-wise as far as saying some girl beat my streak. And, you know, his conspiracy in regards of the timing, I really don't give a shit about because her streak started well before contact came with go i mean what her streak started in what um what in 2015 20, 2015 is when the streak started right like damn near a whole year and a half before goldberg was even debuting back in wwe no that was always in the plan goldberg you're being a mark and also i mean why are you shit talking to oscar when she had nothing to do with the booking it's not as if she went out of her way to book herself to win so many matches and everything like that no, that's come on get over yourself goldberg i love him just saying i it's, it's just such a mark thing, bro. It's such a mark. He really thinks he's a real life superhero sometimes, doesn't he, huh? He really does. No, dude, Asuka didn't book herself to win a bunch of fucking matches. That was WWE. You have a problem, take it up with them. And I'm not talking about coming up with some conspiracy nonsense of they're bringing me in, brother, at the time when the streak is going on with Asuka. Again, it's so retarded. She was there like a year and a half, damn near, before you even got there. And that's when the streak started to begin with. Go break, start being the mark, man. I swear to God. I mean, fuck. Maybe you should focus more so on how you're going to get around Bret Hart coming after you. Because little do you know, he's peeking behind the bushes over and over again. And something tells me he has a Hamas hijab on getting ready to fucking nuke your ass. Just throwing it out there. With that being said, let's get to the SmackDown review. Okay, well, that's really unique um yo to my south florida homies if y'all from florida in particular miami dade broward county uh key west around that area i'm pretty sure y'all got the same thing that i got also uh i got a storm alert right now you guys maybe can hear it or maybe you can't hear it depending on how good my editing skills is it is pouring down raining right now i mean it is pouring but it's not just pouring down it's a bunch of wind right now. Like, it's super duper windy. Currently, right now, I'm in Miami-Dade. And um, I got the match with Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar. I got the finish and everything with Dominic Mysterio coming out. Um, but I didn't see anything that happened directly after the match. Like, I, the last thing I seen was Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio huddled up on the entranceway. Uh, and then I just got a special alert. It cut off my entire program for, like, the next four or five minutes and i don't know what happened they were pretty much telling me or i guess the rest of miami uh the rest of south florida in general to be on the lookout for tornado watches so that sounds like fun i'm i'm skibbity myself right now like I'm, I'm super skibbity myself and like i said it, it is pouring down raining right now as we speak uh, again, I'm going to do my best to muffle the noise. I got one of those noise things inside my app. So you might can't hear it right now, but it's it's pouring down and it's super fucking windy. I, if I had to guess how many miles per hour, at least 25. I'm, and I'm just taking a guess between 20 to 25 miles per hour when currently at the moment it's pouring down rain. And apparently we're on watch till three o'clock in the morning. So there might be another inter. They said there's going to probably be another interruption during the broadcast before it hits 10 o'clock. But if it isn't, if it is, I'll, I'll let you guys know, obviously. But if not, it is what it is. But getting back to the programming, though, uh, with Rey Mysterio and Dominic uh, Mysterio, because that's pretty much the crux of all this. Look, I don't mind the feud. Ray and Dominic had a hell of a feud last year. I like the programming going into WrestleMania. But it kind of seems like it's a step back. You know what I mean? Like, I understand, and I know where they're probably going to go with, with uh, Dominic Mysterio and all this stuff. You know, Santos Escobar help, asked him to help him out as far as screwing over his father and all this. Like, you know where they're going with this. My thing is, so, like, is it going is it going to be, like, a six-man street fight match with Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio, or uh, Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio teaming up with the rest of the OWO members? Or is it going to be, like, Rey and Carlito? And I, I, I don't know where they're going to go with this. I honestly don't know. I feel like they're complicated things by getting dominic involved i don't think you really need it to get him involved i get maybe your whole perception or progression towards this is essentially saying well we got to get dominic on the show because he's one of the biggest hills in the company i get that logic but i feel like there were probably better things for dominic mysterio to do than to just shoehorn him into this match right here because in, in reality Ray and Santos could have been at WrestleMania. And, and you know what? I will say this. Maybe we're grateful. Maybe. I, I don't know because the match in itself was kind of sloppy. Ray did slip up and botch trying to do a springboard crossbody. So maybe it was for the better. But I mean, just story oriented wise. I mean, hell, maybe I would have honestly done an LWO versus uh, Legado de Fantasma. 
shit, you could have went a Pennsylvania street fight, no different than the Chicago street fight back at WrestleMania 13. But you know, I, I feel like they're kind of shoehorning Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio. You know, I don't know. You guys tell me. Do you want to see Dominic Dominic Mysterio versus Rey Mysterio again? I'm still I'm kind of conflicted on it. It's like it's a good story, but at the same time, yeah, no heat on it for the entire year. It just a retread right back to it. Just seems like it's a cop out to a certain degree. But uh, with that being said, hang on for a second. I see Cody Rhodes. Well, that's interesting. So you had Bianca Bell. I like that little, um, little, the little small things as far as their production. Uh, you know, they're they're switching up the production week after week after week with the guys arriving in the arenas with the time clock on the side, the camera um shots and whatnot. AEW's doing the same thing too, by the way. But I like that also. You have you have the camera shot on Cody Rose and he's like signing autographs or whatever. And then mid shot, you got Bianca Belair and Naomi walking right past him. I, I think that's really cool. They should do more of that kind of stuff. Kind of like interluding and interloping people together. I mean, maybe if they gave a shit about universe mode next year, we can get more stuff like that. I don't know. We still talking about universe mode. <sighs> but yeah, uh, you had Bianca Belair and Naomi walking down the corridor, and they were pretty much essentially talking about the whole, you know, Bailey and damage control stuff. And Bianca Belair, again, is it just me or is she coming off a lot more heelish? Or it could just be me. Again, I think I talked about this last week, but she kind of gives me that Drew McIntyre type of vibe as far as how she's carrying herself, at least in this angle right here. But um, essentially, she was telling Naomi, like, hey, man, you can't support this. You don't know how everything went down. You weren't here. They were torturing me, yada, yada, yada. And Naomi, for some fucking reason, it's like, you don't understand. They're going to pick us up, like, you know, one by one. I can't do this by myself. You don't have to do this at all, Naomi. <laughs> That's Bianca Belair's point. You don't have to do this. You're sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. You're, you're acting retarded. You don't have to do this. That's That's our whole point. And Naomi's like, oh, fuck, I guess I'm going to do it by myself. And Bianca has like the sad look on her face. No, Bianca, don't help her. In fact, turn on her. She's a moron. She wasn't here to see what you guys had to go through. Okay, no, that's on Naomi, bro. She wants to do it by herself. If I was Bianca, I will say go do it by yourself then. Oh, boy. But um, we'll see how that's going to go later on tonight. Right now, we got um, uh, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows versus Austin Theory and... Grayson Waller, I'm assuming, having something to do with that ladder match at WrestleMania, so let's get back to that. But again, if you guys hear an interruption or, like, for an example, something happens in regards to me not knowing what a segment happened on, I'll talk about it, obviously, in real time. But it's because, again, I'm on a tornado warning. So, <sighs> wish me luck. Let's go. Oh, man, this is not looking good, folks. I'm not even going to lie to you. It is not looking good right now. Um, It is... It stopped raining, but the wind, man, the wind is blowing really, really hard at the moment. And that's just me physically. As far as watching the show, I keep getting interruptions in the middle of the show. I It's it's really, really hard to review. I got like three interruptions and in like three segments. I had to go back to social media just to see the finish to Naomi and EO Sky because they, they, they interrupted the finish with the breaking news as far as the weather report is considered. And yeah, it's it's bad the wind it's again it's stopped raining this is drizzling at the moment but goddamn this looks like a hurricane but it's only march we don't start getting hurricanes to like around like june-ish yeah well let me get my candles ready right god damn i see where this is going oh boy i know my lights are gonna go out tonight <sighs> that sounds like fun let me charge everything up before i oh, god damn it let me get ready to charge everything up. But, um, yeah, with this show so far, as you can tell, this is probably, uh, this is probably the last thing on my mind at the moment, but still got a job to do. So let me get right to it. Like I said, unfortunately with the OC match and Austin theory and, uh, Grayson Waller, they didn't cut out on that match. I did not get a breaking news on that match. <laughs> that match actually happened throughout the actual commercial breaks. Actually, the commercial break happened, and then I got a breaking news, and then it came back, and it was still on commercial break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you didn't do me a favor there, did you, fucking local news? But, uh, yeah, the fucking Grayson Waller and Austin Theory won the match with their feet on the ropes. I guess this is just a tournament to build up into WrestleMania. Like I said, I don't really care. The match in itself was really, really boring. I, I, I Just the point of the OC is just, I, I don't even know. And then you had um the ta the match with Naomi and Io. And like I said, the match in itself was really good. I was liking it until we got to like the last five minutes. And I literally missed everything. I didn't see any of the last five minutes. When the breaking news ended, 
all I see is the girls beating the shit of Naomi. Like, that's all I see. I go on social media just to see what the fuck is going on. I see someone posted that they attacked Bailey, and literally, as soon as I, as soon as the breaking news ended, Naomi's getting stumped out, and then Bianca Belair runs out to the ring, and uh, she tries to, um, she tries to help Naomi. Uh, she got Kyrie Sam up for uh, what was it, what she calls it again? The um, fuck, I can't even think straight right now. Fuck, man, I hate this shit. Fuck, my god. <sighs> What what the, what does she call the reverse um the reverse AA I can't even remember at the moment, bro. <sighs> Regardless, you know I'm fucking talking about her finish. Um, she got her leg taken up by um one of the girls in the match, and they stumped her out some more. Oh wait, Bray Wyatt, hang on. All right, they got some stupid fucking segments going on right now at the moment. Kevin Owens is talking to Pretty Deadly, and Tiffany Stratton walked by Bianca Belair, washing out Naomi's eyes. Still, I'm not even sure what's going on right now with Tiffany Stratton also. Like, this shit is so jumbled up with the women. Outside of Bailey and Io, I have no clue what's going on with Damage Control. Apparently, Jay Cargill is now coming to SmackDown. We'll see. Holy shit. We'll see her next week. Uh, we got KOD. There you go. God damn, that was going to fucking kill me. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, uh, you got fucking... Um, I mean, with all the stuff with Damage Control and Naomi and Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill and Tiffany Stratton, seriously don't know what the fuck is going on as far as the women is considered. But really quick, though. Um, so they're going to do this, doc which I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of. They're going to do this documentary series with um, with uh, Bray Wyatt. Uh, it's going to drop on April Fool's Day of all places, right? Uh, that is going to be really good. I actually want to see that. You know what? I never do things like this. You know what? I'm going to actually do um, I'm gonna do a review on the documentary series. Or at least I'm going to go through it. I don't know if review is the right word for it. Because, you know, you say review and that automatically ties into whether or not it's good or whether or not it's bad. Um, I don't think that's appropriate for something like this. But, you know, just to let you guys know, be on the lookout on what's it, April 1st. So this is... Oh, and it's on the start of my vacation also, which is great. Um... <laughs> That's great. So cool. It's going to happen the day. So I'm going on vacation next week. So you guys should be looking out for it. Not this week coming up, but next week, Saturday is the first day for my vacation. I'm not going back to work till the following Monday. So you guys should be on the lookout. I'm going to have so many videos dropping <laughs> next week. It's going to be crazy. And I guess my first day of my vacation is going to be the whole Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens. Uh, Bray, looking at him on my TV right now. The whole Bray Wyatt miniseries. Or I guess the documentary, not miniseries. So uh, be on the lookout for that. I'm actually going to do a review for that. I got nothing else better to do anyways, right? <sighs> so um, I see AJ Styles on my TV right now. So let's see what's going on with that. And uh, hopefully this doesn't ruin all my stuff you know let's let's see this i'll talk about that later oh boy man this shit is hell man this is this is hell bruh i this is i can't even edit in the photos the way i want to the, the lights keep flickering i just switched to my cell phone right now folks i had to take all my information put it in the usb drive and just transfer it over to my cell phone i'm recording on my phone now because the lights keep cutting off and it keeps <sighs> man this is fucking frustrating as shit bruh oh this is what i get for buying a desktop this is what I get for buying a desktop. Okay, so if I sound weird as far as recording is considered, I try my best to kind of fix it a little tiny bit. Uh, I am using my old cell phone, so the audio quality can at least sound similar to how it was about two months ago when the last time I was using it. Hopefully it doesn't sound too weird. It should sound kind of the same because I'm using the exact same microphone on this one that I did on the computer. But um, yeah, I had to. The lights kept cutting off and cutting on, and they kept ruining my. As a matter of fact, I'm not even gonna go do the background pictures, cause Power Director on my cell phone gives you the option, but it's a pain in the ass to layer it out. So I'm just taking all the stuff that I have right here. I'm gonna transfer it to my cell phone, just put it in Power Director, and just work with what I got. I think I I picked the mist. I used mystical um, music as far as the background. I think my opener should still be straight. I went back to go check it out. Hopefully nothing glitches out. But as far as the multiple pictures I have, I, I can't do it, man. This is, it's going to take too fucking long. I'm not going to be able to get the video out on time. <sighs> but from what I've seen so far, paying attention left and right with the breaking news still occurring, this is just fucking hell, bro. I got the glimpse of AJ Styles and LA Knight fighting. Um, at least they're building up that feud going into WrestleMania. That's good at the very least. Um, 
they're actually doing more with this feud than anything in AEW currently at the moment. So that's awesome. And it was one more thing because I was so busy trying to focus on so many fucking things at the same time, bro. Um, again, if you guys want to talk in the comment section, I'll be sure to come back and talk to your comments if you want to discuss the show. Because I feel like I'm not doing a good job with this review. I can't go as in depth like I want to because of everything that's occurring right now at the moment, man. This is fucking torture. I seen the AOP and Street uh, the Street Profits match. Uh, that was relatively decent. Again, I had my eyes on that, and at the same time, trying to get all the stuff straightened out on my cell phone. So I, I didn't quite catch the moves, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't that drastic. Um, I, I did catch uh, them winning the match with a roll up. I think it was Montez for it. <sighs> so I, I guess that is what it is. Again, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm never, never this disorganized. I like to think that I have OCD when it comes being when it comes to having all my shit together. And between the storm and between. The fucking broadcast constantly interrupting the fucking show. I got like at least seven or eight interruptions throughout the show. This is this has got to be one of the worst reviews I've ever personally done by far. Of all my years of reviewing pay-per-views, of reviewing shows, this is hell. And right now I see Cody Rhodes coming out, getting ready to have his promo with Roman Reigns. So hopefully I can make it all up with the main event. If they don't interrupt this, like, I, I don't know, bro, I'm crossing my fingers hopefully so far i haven't seen the interruption in the last 10 to 15 minutes they said they're going to come back around 10 30 to give us an update hopefully it will be 10 30 and not right now god damn man but we got cody and roman and the main events i mean if you can hear it in my voice right now folks i'm struggling i am i'm struggling with this review but um cross your fingers man hopefully i can make it through this i just gotta it's 9 44 right now i just gotta make it the last 15 minutes of the show just get me through this please do not interrupt the show i'm recording now on my cell phone so there should be no interruptions in regards to the lights crossing my fingers again if you guys want to discuss the show in thorough i'll be able to go back and forth for you in the comment session just to make up for all the stuff that i missed on the show through no fault of my own again I, it's nothing I can do about it. I, I re all I can do is go back on social media and see if anything that I miss and just touch on the actual events. I can't go in depth. I, I can't. They, they keep interrupting in the middle of all the fucking segments. <sighs> fucking hate this, man. I hate this shit. It makes me look so fucking unprofessional. <sighs> all right, let's get with the main event. God damn. Okay, so good news and bad news. The good news is I made it through the main event. There was no breaking news or any interruptions i watched it on my cell phone the entire time my lights are out currently at the moment that's the bad news and as you can tell if you can hear it oh you can't hear it you guys can't hear it let me help you out here for a second just in case because apparently you guys think i'm bullshitting right now you hear that you guys hear that that's rain coming through my screen doors right now at the moment had to put my shades back down again it is pouring down raining even harder than what it was earlier so here we are right now here we are right now i have to get ready to go to work in about an hour bro how the fuck am i driving in all this i'm not i'm just gonna call out it's bullshit i'm not going to work tonight fuck this i'm calling out this is nonsense bro look at this shit this is incredible i can't even make it to my car i'm pretty sure right now outside is flooded like i can't even drive like fuck it oh i hate this shit man everything about tonight just sucks and you know what else sucks? This promo sucked. Everything about it. Maybe it could just be the fact that I'm just agitated as fuck. But I paid attention. This is the only thing tonight that didn't have a breaking news segment in the middle of it. So I had the opportunity to actually focus and pay attention to the segment tonight. And folks, this was bad. This was really, really bad. They didn't do anything. It's not even bad in the sense of like, oh, they botched something. Or, oh, like... Uh, uh, something happened with the show a signal went out breaking news again no this was just boring this was a fucking boring ass promo they didn't do shit nothing I can't even the rhetoric of what they were saying in the ring was just pointless as oh my god I gotta yell over the rain fuck oh fuck this review bro fuck this show and fuck this review let me make it through this shit real quick. Yo, the fucking main event segment, they didn't say shit. You tell me, what did they say during, during the event, guys? What did they say? First off, them they, they're just stalling for time, bruh. Roman Reigns coming out to the ring. 
cutting a nonsensical, blase ass promo, bruh. Then you got Cody Rose making his way to the ring, and they go to commercial break. Just to come back from commercial break, Cody gets in the ring, they circle each other for a little bit, and they say nothing. Oh, don't get it wrong, they said a bunch of words, but those words mean nothing. They said nothing at all, period. This was bad, this was garbage. And I was afraid of this. This is the Roman Reigns and Cody Rose Road to WrestleMania all over again from last year. Guest appearance from the fucking Rock. That's all it is. Had it not been for the Rock, this set, this whole fucking feud would be no different than last year. Even worse, it's like they're doing less compared to this year than it was last year. Like, come on, bro. This shit is trash. How do you guys sit here and legitimately justify this shit? For real, how do you say, like, you really love mediocrity to sit back and watch what the fuck is being presented on your television and legitimately tell me with a straight face that that shit is good? Have you seen WrestleMania main event build-ups throughout the years? Is this your first one? Was last year your first one? Did you stop in the middle of the PC era bullshit and didn't come back till this year? And this happens to be your second WrestleMania build-up. Because I can tell you, throughout the years going to WrestleMania, the main event was always the most important build, bro. I still remember my way, clear as day in my fucking mind. As bad as the main events for WrestleMania could be, that doesn't take away from the fact that the majority of the main events fucking deliver in regards to getting you hyped up and ready for the show. Say what you will about Triple H and Randy Orton, as bad as the match was, they had a great build to it. Got you hyped up for it. This shit right here... This shit doesn't even feel like we're going to WrestleMania right now, bruh. It doesn't even feel like it. It doesn't even feel like any big fault. It feels like we're going to another episode of fucking SmackDown setting up for Roman and Cody Rhodes. And then in the end of this promo, because again, they're not saying shit at all. You want to hear the best line out of all this? That's how lame this segment was. Roman Reigns. For the like millionth time calling Rode Cody Rhodes, you're number two. And Cody Rhodes is like, well, no, I'm not number two, because at WrestleMania, I'm going to be the one. That's the highlight of the entire fucking promo. I shit you not. That was the fucking highlight. Are you going to sit here with a straight face and tell me this was a good segment? Oh, but it gets better. Because after the promo, because they had an agreement that nobody from each side, no allies gets involved in us talking with our shitty, boring universe mode promo. Roman Reigns goes outside the ring and he snaps his fingers. Out comes with hoods on Jay, or Jimmy Uso from one side of the arena and fucking Sola Sokoa entering the fucking arena like they're the goddamn show. They didn't attack Cody. They stepped over. They went side. They went to east side of the ring like they were the shield and then walked out to the entrance way to go stand next to Roman. And then out of nowhere, fucking Jay Uso and Seth Rollins pop out of nowhere and they do the same exact thing. And he gets side by side with Cody. This is lame, bruh. This is lame. This whole fucking episode was lame as fuck. Now, granted, again, I'm going to just say with a bit of a caveat that it was hard for me to watch the show tonight. But from looking at what I missed on social media, from seeing little spurts in between not getting fucking interrupted every five seconds, from what I did see, that shit was trash tonight. This mini event was trash tonight. This promo, all this shit was garbage. And then you got for next week, the match card. That shit looks even more garbage. I don't even think they even touched on the fact that they're going to promote the WrestleMania main event next week. I'm pretty sure they are. But I didn't see any match card presenting. The match card flow for tonight, they didn't show anything suggesting that next week we're going to get something with Cody or Roman or Rock or Seth. God almighty, I'm asking for fucking Seth Rollins. That's how far we've gotten right now. Bruh, this is not good. This is not good. This road to WrestleMania is fucking horrible. You guys do realize, when is it? In two more weeks is WrestleMania? Two more weeks is WrestleMania. What, 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 where are we right now? It is the 22nd. Legitimately, two weeks from tomorrow will be WrestleMania. And this is where we're at right now. You're going to really say it with a straight face. Legitimately, stop it with the tribalist bullshit. You're going to sit here with a straight face and tell me what you seen tonight got you hyped up for WrestleMania. Bullshit. Bullshit. 
You sit here with a straight face and tell me that this is getting you hyped up for WrestleMania. I'm going to call bullshit and say that you're just a tribalist saying this because you're a WWE fanboy. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. Stop accepting mediocrity. I go after the AEW fanboys all the time because it is nonsense bullshit. And I call them a cult. Don't be like the cult. Don't be like them. Do not accept mediocrity like the AEW fanboys do. They're done. They're trapped. They'll never get out of that mindset, but I know the majority of the WWE people, I know how you guys think. No different than me. All right, we recognize that WWE is shit, right? That's why we gave AEW a chance, because we wanted to see a legitimate alternative. Don't let WWE put you in that mindset like the AEW fanboys are right now. They are delusional. They are out of their mind batshit crazy when it comes to the AEW stuff. They will never get out of their own way. They will never get out of their own bubble. They will accept anything if it means to be an alternative from WWE in any shape, way, or form. Do not go down that route. Do not be like them. Tonight was bad. This was a bad episode of SmackDown. This was a bad main event program. This was a bad promo segment. Do not accept mediocrity. Put their feet to the fire. We have two more weeks for WrestleMania, and this is what we got tonight. And next week, it doesn't even seem like they're doing anything for WrestleMania in regards to the main event. But they're going to promote Rock for the fucking Monday show as if Rock has any business. You know what? You know what? It is what it is. I said my piece. If you guys want to fucking sit here and criticize what I'm saying because you happen to be that much of a fucking brainless fucking zombie tribalist, then join the fucking party with the rest of the fucking family over here called AEW. Yeah, the family, as in the Manson family, because all you guys are batshit cultists. And so always, my name is Devontae. Let me get the fuck up out of here. Let me go check in my house and see what the hell's going on at the moment. <sighs> Wish me luck. Deuces. P. I. It's just all around fucked up tonight.